Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D Printing Nerd. This is my buddy, Josh. This is my brother from another mother. Hey, guys. Josh is a rabid Star Wars fan. Tell them a little bit about your Star Wars love. Yeah, rabid. That's that's a pretty good definition for it. I've got it tattooed on my body, so that's, you know, usually if you love something enough to tattoo it on yourself, then you are a pretty big fan. Uh, but yeah, I've loved Star Wars ever since I was a little kid, and I am super passionate about it. And this isn't just the movies. This is no, books, this is, comic this books. Is, this is yeah, the, the whole books, universe. Comic books. I own every single book in existence that no longer exists canonically. But I can, you know, I could I could do lectures on five thousand years before a new hope, and you know, a hundred and fifty years after a new hope, um, or A B Y B B Y after Battle of Yavin, before Battle of Yavin, if you want to, you know, but all in all the non-canonical stuff. And I'm excited for all the new canonical stuff. So I just love everything. Josh is going to be doing a lot more Star Wars stuff on the secondary channel, Technically Nerdy. There'll That's be right. a link down below. And at the end, we'll have a technic Technically Nerdy logo you can click on if you want to go see that channel. But for now, what I thought, with Josh being such a big Star Wars fan, we should do something Star Wars related on the laser cutter. Yeah! Oh. That's awesome. It is awesome. What do you think? What should we do on the laser cutter? Um, you know, I'm torn. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool to do like cut a lightsaber with lasers. Yeah. You know, laser cutting laser. But what I really want. Let's keep it simple for now. What I really want is a Millennium Falcon. Awesome. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the internet. We're going to find a picture of a Millennium Falcon. We're going to bring it into Illustrator. And we're going to convert it into vectors and, and we're going to trace the image. We're then going to bring that data into the laser software and then engrave it, cut it out, and hopefully have ourselves an awesome Millennium Falcon. Nice. You ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. First, what I did is I brought this image of the Millennium Falcon into Illustrator. I think this is the, the, the fat head image. I think it is. It's really, it's quite large. So here's what I want to do first. Um. For some reason, the full spectrum use software has problems with PNGs. This is a PNG. So I'm going to do file. I'm going to export as a uh, as a, a JPEG, which I believe if I could do it here, it's right there. Anyway, I've already done that, but you can do it as well. So export this as a JPEG, just so you know when you start off. And then what you want to do is make sure this is highlighted and you want to go image trace. It's going to do some magical things. And then the tracing result is what you want. Uh, but the preset is going to be a silhouette. Perfect. It's exactly what you want. And then what you're going to do is export that. Oops, I hit the wrong button. You're going to export that as an SVG. And I've already done that as well. So now that you have the JPEG and the SVG, you're going to load up. Retina Engrave. Here it is. First, what you can do is bring over the JPEG. And you can just drop it in here. And it'll look great. Just give it a little bit of time to process. It's okay. It's okay. There it is. That's what it looks like. What you want to do is bring it down in size a bit to fit the medium that you're going to put it on. I'm going to do that right like that. And then I'm going to hit this button. This is the halftone dither. Pow, that's what it looks like. Looks much better. Much better. Now for SVGs, I can't just drop it in here. I don't know why, but I'm going to hit this pencil icon to go into the, at the draw. And I'm going to open up the SVG. You can see I already have it open there. I'll open it again. Anyway, that's it right here. It brings in that silhouette. And here's the important part. I'm going to export it to Retina Engrave. Retina Engrave is going to take that SVG and it's going to bring in the raster image, and it's going to bring in the vector. The raster being the, the black infill, the vector being the path around the outside. And I'm, I'm willing to bet you're starting to see what I'm doing. So here is here it is. Here's the, the raster. Here's the vector. We don't need the raster, so I'm going to hit the trash can next to it. Here's the vector drawing. It's just a big outline. Let's size it down, bring it in, and then zoom in. Here's our Millennium Falcon, and you can see that this is the raster. This is the thing that's going to uh, be lasered on back and forth. This is the raster. This is what is going to actually make 
cuts. And the idea is to make it so that it fits just around the outside of the Millennium Falcon like that. Now you want to do the raster before you do the vector, which is what we're doing. The raster power, I'm going to drop it down to 65%, and I'm going to choose 1000 by 1000 DPI because I want it to look really good. Over on the vector, since I'm cutting 8th inch birch plywood, um, this, this highlighted one, this is my vector path. I only have one vector path here. And I know I can go about 50% speed, 100% power, 100% current, and that will, in one pass, cut through it nine times out of ten. If I have to go a little bit extra, it's okay. That's really it. At this point, I'm going to hit that giant button, and I'm going to laser that thing. Well, the laser's done. Here it is. This is it. So this was 65% laser power on the raster cuts and the raster engraving in the wood. This is eighth inch birch plywood. And then I did 50% speed, 100% power on the laser, cutting out around it. It got through most of the way, but in the time lapse, you didn't see one more pass just to get some of the stuff it didn't get out. Josh, what do you think? I, you know what? I love this. Not knowing like what laser cutters could do, uh, I had no idea we could get this much detail into the design. Like, you know, I'd seen some stuff, you know, text and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's that's already really cool. But this level of detail is just mind-blowing to me. And I am I'm in awe of how just minute everything, and you can get it to just show up. Yeah, the laser itself, so there's three different modes within the, um, the full-spectrum use software. There's 250, 500, and 1,000 DPI mode. I did this at 1,000 DPI, and that's why you actually have such incredible detail. And when laser cutting and laser engraving, the laser power is going to dictate how far deep the engrave goes. And I think I think 65% power on the laser for the engrave and the, and the, the raster cut, I think it's perfect. I think that looks really yeah, good. absolutely. Like right now, I'm just imagining like owning a like a log cabin somewhere woodsy but then like making a nerd cabin where you could have like all these fancy wood engravings of like all these nerd things and just like be like nice and tasteful yeah <laughs> tasteful wood carved tasteful nerd wood things. carved nerd things in your nerd cabin in the middle of the woods that's my new life goal so i'll you know i'll be back doing that for that's the a good rest life of the goal. year <laughs> One of the things we did have an issue with, and one of the things yes. I don't quite understand. So if you look at the Millennium Falcon, even though I set it up to have the cut be a border equidistant from the artwork around the Millennium Falcon, the problem was the cut dove in deeper over here. And I'm I'm thinking about it. it I think it was a problem as well when I didn't have the height correct on the laser when, when the material is in there. Um, and maybe someone who had, knows laser cutters better than me can understand, but what, what I don't understand is I lay out the exact pattern in the laser software itself, and then the laser doesn't actually put the pattern I put in the laser software on the wood. So maybe someone can talk to me about that. Maybe, uh, maybe there's, I can use the software better. Maybe there's an update out. I'll talk to full spectrum, but for now... I think, Josh, you still like this? I still like it a lot. It's totally yours, man. <sighs> the start of your your nerd it log even cabin. It smells good. It does just, smell good. Yeah. All right, well, you know what? Let's call it good right here. Again, on it's 3D printing, but we do some laser cutting. We're going to do some other maker stuff and repurposing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Don't forget to leave a comment and tell me if you want more cool Star Wars stuff like this done on the laser. Um, Thanks for watching all the ads all the way through, or thanks for funding the channel via Patreon.com. Patreon is the reason that I'm able to afford my buddy Josh here as a part-time assistant, so hopefully more content and more time for me to actually be with my family and catch some sleep. Finally, uh, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five. High five.